Welcome back. This is United Inside News. You can make subscribe to this platform if you are fans and love of Manchester United to receive every updates of Manchester United. Let's go. Bruno Fernandes reveals what Rasmus Hoylund is trying to do in Manchester United dressing room. Man United spent $72 million on Hodgelund this summer in the hope of adding more goals to their team, detailing how the youngster is trying to speak to everyone as he aims to build a relationship with his new teammates. Hojlund was United's marquee summer arrival, joining in a 72 million deal from Atalanta at the start of August. After missing the opening weeks with a back injury, the striker came off the bench to make his debut during last weekend's 3-1 defeat at Arsenal. The Denmark international made a strong first impression at the Emirates, using his power and pace to cause Arsenal problems. It was his smart flick to Casemiro that opened up space for Alejandro Garnacho to score, only for his effort to be disallowed for offside. The success of Hojlun's debut campaign with United will inevitably be measured by the number of goals he scores. But for the new striker to score, those behind him must create, and Fernandez hopes the pair can hit the ground running together. Hojlund is someone who is always trying to speak to everyone. He is really open. Fernandez told club media. He's a kid that, from what I've seen, wants to work and get in the team because he wants to be fit as soon as possible. I think he has a lot of energy, a lot of strength, and hopefully a lot of goals, too. Of course, I want to build that connection with him that I have with the other strikers and wingers because I'm here to serve them, so I want them to feel happy that they will get their chances. And after that, it's about them getting the goals. I want my strikers and wingers to score goals, and I want to see their happy faces celebrating in front of the Stretford end. Hojland will hope to strike up a similar relationship to the one that Fernandez has enjoyed with Marcus Rashford recently. Last season, United's top scorer described the Portuguese midfielder as the perfect player to play with. The Dane will hope to open his account upon returning from international duty, with United hosting Brighton in their first game back. Again, and again. As it is confirmed by the club, new Manchester United midfielder Sofian Amrabat will not take part in Morocco's September internationals after being withdrawn from the Atlas Lions squad due to injury. Head coach Walid Regragu has called up Yahya Gibran to replace our num four, who will return to work at Carrington following his arrival from Fiorentina in a season-long loan deal on deadline day. Amrabat was unveiled as a red earlier this week, reuniting with Eric Ten Hag, who coached him at Utrecht between 2015 and 2017. Morocco are due to face Liberia in their final Africa Cup of Nations qualifier on Saturday, although the 2022 World Cup semi-finalists have already confirmed their place in January's tournament. A draw in Agadir will be enough to claim top spot in Group K from South Africa, who have also booked their spot in the finals. Morocco are then due to play fellow African side Burkina Faso in a friendly in the French city of Lens next Tuesday. Amrabat was due to win his 50th cap this month, after becoming a stalwart in the African team's engine room. The former Feyenoord and Club Brugge man, who made his international debut in 2017, was a vital presence in midfield as the North Africans became the first side from their continent to reach the last four of a World Cup during the tournament in Qatar. On the other side, after getting his first minutes as a Manchester United player against Arsenal last Sunday, Rasmus Hoyland was in action again on Thursday night, this time for Denmark. Named as a substitute by Kasper Hulmund, our num 11 had to watch from the bench as Denmark went 3-0 up in the first 45 minutes. Spurs midfielder Pierre-Emile Hoiberg fired them ahead before Hoyland's United teammate Christian Eriksen was on hand to create the second goal with an audacious backheel pass that was finished off by Joachim Mail. Eriksen proved key again, and his sweeping pass into the area was thumped home by Jonas Wind. Hoyland was eventually called on just past the hour mark to add even more firepower to Denmark's attack. In a mirror image of his short display against the Gunners, the 20-year-old imposed himself on the game instantly settling into the flow of things quickly. His first attempt of the game came from just outside the area and would be one of three that were blocked before they could test the goalkeeper. The others were a close-range header and a right-footed strike which was closed down by defenders.
Despite a VAR review disallowing Morten Yulman's goal for offside, Denmark made it 4-0 through Yusuf Poulsen, as Eriksson completed his hat-trick of assists in a comprehensive victory. Elsewhere in the Euro qualifiers, the Reds' deadline day signing Johnny Evans scored Northern Ireland's second goal as they lost 4-2 away to Slovenia. Meanwhile, our young Tunisian midfielder Hannibal played for the first hour of his country's 3-0 home win over Botswana. On the other side, after Manchester United winger Jadon Sancho has had a difficult week amid a public fallout with manager Eric Ten Hag. It has been a tough week for Jadon Sancho after he hit back publicly at Eric Ten Hag for the manager criticizing his training efforts as he was left out of last week's squad. Sancho was subsequently linked to the Saudi Pro League via the mail, while ESPN even criticized his character behind the scenes. So what Sancho needs is a little good news, a pick-me-up, which has come with some kind words from Christian Eriksen. Speaking to Manchester United's website, Christian Eriksen spoke out in a Q&A where he picked out Jadon Sancho as the most skillful player on the club's books. Eriksen said, There are a few skillful in different ways. I'll go Sanch. Jadon Sancho is very skillful. A bit of both. His touch, his movement, he's very quick on the first few meters as well, in and out. There are a few good ones in there in skills, but I'll go with Sanch. Jaden Sancho is in his third season at Manchester United, and the big issue with his performances is that he just does not seem like the player we watched at Borussia Dortmund. Again and again. It's confirmed that Al Edifak missed out on Sancho. Al Edifak missed out on Manchester United ace Jaden Sancho after Saudi Arabia's summer transfer window slammed shut last night. The Saudi outfit were priced out of a last-minute move to land Sancho. Steven Gerrard's side made an inquiry for the winger following his public bust-up with United manager Eric Ten Hag. However, the Red Devils were only willing to loan the England International out, and Al Edifak were told the deal would include an obligation to sign the 23-year-old for a fee of around $50 million at the end of the season. Let's talk about United takeover news. Manchester United's bidders remain in contact with the Glazers, despite recent reports suggesting the unpopular owners are removing the club from the market. It is claimed that the Glazer family's 10 billion demands weren't met by either Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani or Sir Jim Ratcliffe. According to the Times, though, Sheikh Jassim and Ratcliffe remain in contact with the relevant parties surrounding the potential sale of the club. The pair also spoke with Rain, who are handling the sale of the club for the Americans. However, the two frontrunners are said to be exasperated and frustrated with the repeated delays. On the other side, Manchester United signing Sofyan Amrabat, revealed manager Eric Ten Hag, played a major role in convincing him to move to Old Trafford on loan from Fiorentina. Amrabat made the breakthrough at Utrecht when he worked under Ten Hag. He said that, The manager was very important. I was very young, 18 or 19. He gave me the chance to play in the first team. I learned a lot from him. It's fantastic to be back with him. He's a coach who pushes to the limit. He's hungry, a winner, and I like that. I'm similar. I want to learn every day, and I think we are a good match. Off the pitch, I'm relaxed, but on the pitch, I'm a winner. Again and again. Donnie wants out United Flop. Donnie Van de Beek is hoping to get out of his Old Trafford nightmare by securing a move to Turkey in the next few days. Galatasaray and Fenerbahce are both interested in landing Van de Beek before their transfer window slams shut on Friday. The Red Devils would be receptive to an offer after leaving the playmaker out of their Champions League squad earlier this month. The Netherlands international is worried he may suffer a similar fate when names are put forward for the Premier League by clubs on Wednesday. Meanwhile, Argentina coach Lionel Scaloni has suggested he will not select Manchester United defender Lisandro Martinez for the World Cup qualifier with Ecuador. The South Americans open their defense of the trophy with a home game in the early hours of Friday morning, UK time. In advance of the 2026 tournament in Canada, Mexico, and the United States, there are six automatic places at the showpiece event up for grabs in the continent's section. 
and Scaloni remains in charge after guiding the nation to their triumph in Qatar. Martinez was one of United's outstanding performers at Arsenal before being forced off in the 67th minute, when experiencing discomfort in his foot as Harry Maguire took his place. Reds manager Eric Ten Hag said he was not sure if it was an injury following the match and the center back linked up with his country as planned. Licha, as you know, had an issue with his feet, Scaloni said, ahead of the Ecuador clash. In the last game at Arsenal, he was in pain and went out for precaution. They have done studies, and he's well. We'll evaluate whether to use him or not, admitted the former West Ham United defender. At first, for tomorrow's match, it'd be a little rushed. We'll see for the second match. The next fixture is a trip to Bolivia on Tuesday, representing a first game on the road for Argentina in the South American section. Alejandro Garnacho is also in the squad and can look to further his reputation by showing his skills on the big stage. Local reports suggest the Reds' youngster is likely to be on the bench against Ecuador.